Hi everyone, in this video we'll be discussing the problem maximum index. This problem previously has been asked in Amazon. Now the problem says that we'll be given an integer array and the task is to find the maximum value of j minus i such that a of i is always less than or equal to a of j and i is less than or equal to j. So the problem says that we'll be given a particular integer array and we have to find the maximum value of j minus i such that two constraints are satisfied. The first constraint is that i value should be less than or equal to j and the ai value should be less than or equal to aj. Okay, so let's talk about the very simple approach for solving such kind of a problem. The very first and the simple approach can be that we can choose an i, okay, and for a particular i, since we want the maximum value of j minus i, so for every i, we can start our j from n minus 1 and we can keep on checking if the constraint is satisfied, okay, the, like suppose if the constraint is satisfied, then we'll store that difference and at, at the end of the day, for every i, whichever is the maximum value of j minus i, we'll store and we'll return that. So if we are going to do it like that, so for every i, we start from 0, okay, and then we can start uh, the j for that particular i from n minus 1. Okay, then we will have two loops because one loop is nested inside the other. So we have the i loop at the top and for every i, we are starting our j from n minus 1 because we want the maximum distance. Now in that case, the complexity would be order of n square because in this case, we will check that if i is less than or equal to j and at the same time, a of i is less than or equal to a of j, then we'll keep on calculating the distance. Okay, but like this will take order of n square time, which is very costly. Instead of that, can we do something better? So let us look at the samples and then we can determine it better. So suppose that what we have is we have got 34, then we have got 8. Suppose we have got 34, then we have got 8, then we have got 10. Okay, 34, 8, 10, then we have got what? Then we have got 3, then we have got 2. Okay, then after this we have got 80, 30. Then we have got what? Uh, let's say we have got 33 and then we have got 1 here. So suppose that these are the elements that we uh, have. Okay, so for any particular a of i, if you will observe, suppose that I am at the ith element. So if I am at a particular ith index and the element is a of i, so I want what? I want j, I want a jth element, okay, such that it is on the right side, okay, and it follows the constraint that a i should be less than or equal to a of j. So from the right side, I always want the maximum, right? So basically, you can understand that if the normal array has been given, so if I calculate the right max, okay, so from a particular jth index, right, uh, till the end, if I know what is the maximum, so that will help us a lot. How? So suppose that if I keep an array, let's say right max, so here the maximum value will be 1, here the maximum value will be 33, here the maximum value will be what? Here the maximum value will still be 33, here the maximum value will become uh, nothing but 80, here it will be 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 80. So you will observe what will happen is suppose if my i was standing at this particular index okay then what i can do is since the right max array is now in descending order descending order is also a sorted order so for the jth index i can simply do a binary search there because now the right max array is in sorted order in the decreasing format so i can apply a binary search on that for finding the j if i will apply a approach like that so for one ith index i'm going to take log n time so since there are going to be n indexes, so I will take how much time? n log n time, which is going to be very costly for me as well. Okay, and this we are not going to implement because this might give a time limit exceed as well. Okay, so what we can do here? Like, first of all, why this helps? Because if you will see here, the thing is that if we are at a particular ith index, right? So if we are at a particular ith index, suppose that we are at the very first guy. Okay, then from the right side, we want that what is the maximum value for it okay because we want the i is less than equal to a i less than equal to a j constraint to be satisfied and we want the maximum value from the right okay so for this 34 what is the maximum value from the right side the maximum value is nothing but 80 so that is what i have stored here okay so you can see that when this will stop when i is here now so j will start from here this j is what like suppose that for this i if i is standing here then j will start from here Right. So, it, does this satisfy the constraint? No, the constraint right now is not getting satisfied because the i is less than or equal to j, but uh, the a of i is not less than or equal to a of j. So, in that case, I will decrease my j and my j will come here. Now, again, what will happen? I will apply it on the right array basically. So, again, it does not satisfy because my jth element is here. So, the maximum till here is 33 only. 
Now, after that, my J will again move inside and J will come here. Now, still the maximum uh, from this index till the end is 33 only, right? You can see here. So, still it is uh, this Jth index is not satisfying. Then what will happen? My J will come here. And if my J comes here, then what happens is uh, the element at this index is basically 86 in the right max array. So, starting from here till the very end, the maximum element is what? The maximum element is 80. That is what this index indicates. Okay. So, this is the best possibility for this particular I and this particular J. So that is how I'm checking here. So whatever is the difference, I'll store it. I think the difference will come out to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The difference will come out to be 5 minus 0. That is nothing but 5. So I can assume that the maximum will be 5. Let me just check the answer. Uh, okay, this is coming out to be 6. Maybe I might have done some mistake. Yeah, basically, but the thing is, you can understand that in this way, we'll, when we'll keep on taking out. So whenever the jth element uh, of the right is lesser, so we'll keep on doing what? We'll keep on uh, decreasing our j in order to move to a higher element. But suppose if it satisfies the criteria, then in that case, we'll move our i forward. So here the criteria is satisfied. Then after that, like we can say that we'll still remain at this jth guy and then we'll move our i one step forward. Okay. So this is how we are going to apply this particular approach and we'll keep a track of the maximum value. And we need to store the right max because from that particular, from a particular index till the very end, I want to see what is the maximum value. Because whenever I'm comparing a particular ith element, so I want to compare it with the maximum a of j because uh, if this is uh, maximum right then it will always help me to maintain the uh, condition that a of i is less than or equal to a of j so if i keep a track of the maximum so in that case i don't have to run for the other index i can simply see that for this particular i this 80 is satisfying like this particular thing is satisfying the criteria and also like it makes more clarity so let's now try and implement this and see how we can uh, write the code so what we have to do here is uh, basically we'll iterate so we can say that uh, like uh, we can make a right max array of size n okay and then after that what we will do is we'll make the right max uh, n minus 1th element of the array will be nothing but a of n minus 1 and then after that what we'll do is we'll iterate so we'll say that int i starts from n minus 2 so from the right side we are taking the max okay so i is greater equal to 0 let's say i minus uh, minus and then what we will do is we'll say that right max of i is equal to maximum of right max of i plus 1 maximum that I am uh, like from the right comma the ith element so a of i this is how we are doing it and once we have stored the right max so we can initially mark our distance as what like uh, since we have to calculate the maximum distance so we can mark our answer initially as int min okay then once we like because uh, we have to calculate the maximum value of j minus i so initially we are marking our answer like this then what we can do is we can start our i from 0 and we can start our j from 0 as well okay why we can start our i from 0 and j from 0 you need to understand this because of the fact that if we start our i suppose that if you have your i here so let's let's quickly check this why this will work because what happens is if you will have i here suppose that your i is standing in the ar array and j is standing here so if you have 80 here right so this jth element of the right max is greater so this means that on the right side there is a greater guy so we can afford to move jth index forward right so we can say that we can move here then since this is greater so we'll move our j here then we'll move our j here then we'll move our j here and uh, here like you can see that still 80 is greater and at this place you have 80 so your j directly moves here without any problem so that is why what happens is ultimately your i will be uh, tra traversing whole array and j will be traversing whole array at most once so that will be order of n plus order of n so that will be overall order of n complexity and this is how you can see that efficiently if we were running a brute force approach so that was taking order of n square time but now since we have uh, the right max is stored so our j can afford to move forward knowing that there is a higher element right there because if 80 was at the first place so we keep on moving 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 indicating that we can keep on moving till this particular place and that is how we are always storing the j minus high maximum values okay because for any ith element we are trying to find the uh, maximum j so we are uh, trying to move till that that point okay and if we if we don't then uh, after that we have to increase our i variable so this is how we are doing it uh, let's uh, try and complete our code so what we have to do here is we have to write the condition that while the i value will be lesser than n and the j value will also be lesser than the size of the array and what I will do here is if it happens, right, suppose that if the right uh, max uh, element of the j, if it is greater than equal to, as I said, if it is greater equal to the ith element, then in that case, what you need to do, you need to say that answer is equal to the max of the answer that I have stored so far, comma j minus i, okay, 
and uh, like this is what we need to do and then after that we need to move our j forward because we need to keep on increasing our distance else if it does not satisfy the criteria then we need to move our i forward okay so this is what we need to do and then once this is done then we can simply return our answer that is the maximum distance that we have stored between j and i so let us try and run this code to check if it is working fine on the samples or not okay there is some mistake it says that j was not declared okay i need a comma here now let us try and run it again okay so yes i starts from zero now let's try and submit this to check if it is getting accepted or not so you can see that our code was able to pass all the test cases and again you can see for the intuition part that if uh, we are starting from a ith so you want to for that particular i we want to find the farthest j that we can go to so that is why if we keep on storing the right max if we have already stored the right max so uh, for the if i and j start from zero so i th element is 34 and the jth element of right max is 80 so it will allow us to keep on moving till that 80 okay and this overall would take order of n plus order of n that is uh, order of n complexity and the space complexity would be order of n because i'm making a right max array as well i hope that you have understood this problem clearly uh, make sure to comment down understood if the intuition part was clear about n square n log n approach as well as order of n approach. Thank you for watching this video guys.